You're still waiting for somebody to kick up. I am. Um, hold on, because I'm getting an error message. So let me just uh, sign in. That's what happens when they wanted to launch the space shuttle, you know? Right. Final, final tuning the uh, details. <laughs> So I guess we're going to continue these Zoom meetings. We're all going to have to have dress codes or something. Craig, Craig, Craig doesn't like colors. Do we? <laughs> Would you expect me to comment otherwise? I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm I'm isolated on the Ponderosa here. They don't let me off. Yeah. You know what, George, I'll just record it and um, I'll just record it and I'm going to publish the um, agenda. I, I mean, the meeting code and ID, make it public right now. Okay. And, and that way we'll, we'll meet it. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so we're ready to go. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right. You, have you taken a uh, role, Pam? I have not. Do you, uh, okay. do you want to? Well, just to keep track. Uh, so I'll I'll seat uh, Will uh, for uh, Art. We don't. Do we have any access? Do we have any public comment that uh, anybody's come in with? Uh, no. Okay, under agenda review, um, we've got a, a request from uh, the people building the uh, Hartford Hospital project on, uh, on South Main Street. They've got a, uh, a sign that needs to be uh, discussed by us so that they can get a zoning permit. I'd like to add that under uh, uh, other business uh, E, if I could. So 11E, if that's okay. That's fine. Okay, and uh, Craig just brought up, uh, he'd be interested in discussing uh, the solar farm proposal up on Plant Hill. So if we could add that under uh, old business, that's acceptable. It is. Okay, so <clears throat> moving George, forward. George, I have an item to add to uh, okay, go ahead. the agenda, which make it F, uh, continuing the executive order, 7MM, uh, some legal concerns. 7D, uh, is that what you said? Yeah, after, after, the, uh, after uh, your, your item. Oh, okay, all right. So uh, F under uh, 11, okay. Yeah. That's the executive order. Related to 7MM. Okay, that's acceptable to everybody? It is by me. Okay. All right. So moving forward, uh, the, the, really the first thing on our list is the uh, under seven is PZC 20-08, CGS 8-24 referral uh, 8 Bridge Street. 
applicant town of Winchester proposal boundary line adjustment with property owner of 29 Bridge Street to enable road improvement, including a conversion of Bridge Street to uh, one way traffic. Uh, you gonna talk to that, Jim? Sure, wasn't that eight Charles Street, not eight Bridge Street? Uh, well, it says eight bridge. Let me, oh, it's, yeah, it is eight bridge or eight Charles on the upper. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. That was on yeah. the application, but not on the agenda that way. Okay. So um, you're all probably familiar with the <clears throat> wacky intersection where Bridge Street and Depot Street, Prospect Street, and Willow Street all come together. Um, we get a lot of complaints about that intersection. So we secured a grant to study, to, to design a new traffic pattern through there. And we had a, we, was it a zoning meeting that we had? Um, where we had, we had a public hearing and or a public information meeting. And- That was zoning, that was zoning. That was zoning. So yes. you're, you're somewhat familiar with this probably. And you know the public was was pretty receptive to the the idea of pushing forward with the ideas presented, which was essentially the big change is making Bridge Street um, going up the hill once you get past Depot and Prospect, turning it into a one way street going up the hill. Um, everybody kind of liked the idea about that. The fire department just want, had concerns about being able to get fire trucks back down through the inter, the funky intersection on Maple Street and Charles. And as luck would have it, <clears throat> we took um, we took a property in foreclosure on the corner of that um, that intersection so we can widen the intersection and provide traffic as needed for um, for emergency vehicles, plow trucks, you know, garbage trucks, that kind of thing, school buses. So, but one of the one of the issues when we make Bridge Street one way, the guy at 29 Bridge Street is going to have he's going to have lost um, some use of his driveway. Um, so he's he actually likes the idea, but losing losing the driveway wasn't ideal so we came to me please so we came up with the idea of since we were going to redo that intersection of maple and charles they the small parcel there would get cut in half and one section would be maintained or would be re remain property of the town so we could work that intersection better. The other half would go to 29 Bridge Street and he would have a parking area with a flat walk to the house. And the, you know, the property owner thought that was a pretty good, um, a pretty good swap. And it's a useless piece of land for anything but, you know, the adjacent property owners or the town road. So it seems like everybody wins. Um, so that's what we're proposing to get uh, to get your blessings on. So that that those that parcel A is coming out of that uh, Clifford uh, and Terry. No, so, the, right? so Clifford uh, and Terry is a separate parcel. The oh. parcel A is now it's. It, it belongs to the town. It's like 40 feet wide or something or, oh, okay. you know, by 80 feet long or some crazy thing. Okay. I see what you're, okay. I see what you mean. So you're splitting it in. So we're splitting it, you know, I guess it would be the Eastern half by Charles street it would be one half of the parcel, which the town would keep. And it would be the Western half going towards parcel B and it would it would become part of parcel B after the whole process went through its its you know went through its its you know, assuming it's approved once it went through its um to its logical conclusion. 
<clears throat> there's there's talk that after the intersection is um, reworked, any remaining land on that parcel that was being retained by the town could possibly be um, given to that property uh, where Terry and I can't remember who was on it. Um, but just because it would give them ready. more space okay. and it's not something that we would use it's so that's that's basically the the proposal in a nutshell um if you have any specific questions i'll be happy to try to answer them for you well let's go right around the uh, corner uh, uh, craig your comments on it <clears throat> no i uh, i was there with three of the original uh presentation with jim came in with uh I can't recall. It was someone else that they had hired, I believe, my memory serves me correct. I think it was VHB engineers. Yes. It, you know, you guys made a presentation. You had a uh, various photos, if you recall, and you yep. had three alternatives. Yep. Um, I, 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 as you and I were talking before the meeting, I, I think uh, this is a, a very usable uh, means of getting this uh, to its fruition. Okay. Good. Will? I don't have many questions except uh, what are you going to do for uh, <clears throat> blockades on Bridge Street to make sure that it's one way? Or is that just going to be signage? So it'll be, yeah, it'll be one way up. Um, so the, the right lane, it, it kind of cuts because the because the intersection is being, you know, kind of reconfigured so traffic flows better. <clears throat> the Bridge Street traffic won't be straight up the hill like it currently is. It's going to actually kind of weave left a little bit, then kind of cut across. And whatever barriers are there will be probably vegetation so that it's not like a hard, you know, hard impact. Um, the lane that's not being used would be probably just turned into grass. Um, so nothing, you know, nothing significant. Um, did that answer your question? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay, I see Peter on board. Uh, yep, sorry I'm late, but sorry. Not about <laughs> Any comments on this, uh, Peter? This is this. But good. I was at the original meeting where it was explained by the engineer the three different proposals, and I say this is the best one of the three. Uh, as far as the, the town residence driveway and walkway, is, it, is that going to be part of the project? The town's going to reconstruct that for them? Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure we went. I think I think we would we would definitely have some work to, to do on the existing driveway at 29 Bridge Street. Okay. But the but the driveway that um he would or the parking spot slash you know driveway that he would be gaining um we didn't have any discussion as far as um the town doing any of that construction but uh, I just we, wanted... we would do whatever we could to make it easy i'm not sure uh, we would do the whole project i think it's it's the best design you could get for that area so um, yeah it's it's pretty pretty rough yes yeah okay uh, Jerry, are you still on? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, I was at that meeting as well, and uh, I remember that one of the plans, uh, there was a concern about fire uh, apparatus getting, being able to make its way. And I, and I think this is the one that was like the best one that alleviated that issue, Jim. Yeah, that's, that's why we ultimately chose it. Um, originally, we were thinking if we were going to go one way on Bridge Street, it would be one way down, but the fire department didn't like that. And that got us really thinking, you know, they, A, they want to get up there quickly. And then B, one of the big problems with that intersection is winter traffic coming down that really steep section right yeah. before you get to the stop signs. And this eliminates that. It sends it around um, just a much better course. Um, the public in that area that was at the meeting all seemed pretty okay with it. Um, I don't think there was any, you know, negative dissent. Um, so, you know, what our plan is, is to mock it up on the ground first with paint and cones and give it a trial run and make sure it works as good in practice as it does in theory before we actually put money into construction. But um, 
you know, this is just one of the steps along the way so that we know it's, you know, if we aren't going to get a, a referral to go ahead with this, we'll have to look at other, you know, other alternatives. Jim, do you still think you'll have an issue if you have a sudden icing there with your, with traffic making that turn, not spinning out on that? Good question. I, I in the winter time, it's in the winter time. It's 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 not going to be any worse than it was. Um, there's not a huge amount of traffic <clears throat> that comes from um, Prospect Street and takes a right to go up Bridge Street. That's a really tough corner. So I and the way it's going to be reconfigured, I think it's even less likely people are going to want to do that. I think they'll go across up depot and around. And if they're coming from, you know, coming from Prospect Street, most of that traffic is local traffic. Like they're gonna know where they're going. So they would probably come across Rockwell and over rather than go up Bridge Street. So I, I, don't, I don't anticipate that being a problem. Um, but again, that's one of the reasons for giving it a trial run. Okay, thanks, Jim. Sounds like the best uh, effort here to resolve the issue has been talked about for quite a while. Um, well, without any further discussion, I'd like, I'd like to make a, a motion for a favorable uh, report on uh, this 824 referral. I'll second that. Okay, any further discussion on the uh, motion? All in favor, just raise your hand, please. Okay, looks unanimous. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jim. All right, thank you. Okay, the next uh, item is the uh, 824. So how do I get off of here now? <laughs> Carefully. <We> can... <laughs> I guess, Pam, how do you do that? Let me just, just click leave meeting. <laughs> now we go cross country, just click the switch. Yep. All right. Uh, item uh, 7B is PZ Seeds 20-09, uh, CGS 824 referral 85 uh, Raleigh Street, applicant uh, owner, town of Winchester, is proposal aviation easement to Winston Medical Associates, LLC. Uh, this is the, you know, to do with the uh, heliport and the uh, application. I had it actually, I wanted to get clarity on what was, what was going on with this. So I called uh, uh, Phil Doyle, who's the planner working for uh, the developer. And he it filled me in on a little bit of the details on this. I assumed that where they are right now, that they would have already had their, uh, uh, approval to a level that approved the design and the layout and so forth with the uh, heliport. And apparently, you know, they typical state business, they, uh, they give you a lot of verbal stuff, but they don't put anything in writing or a lot much to it. But apparently the whole design, including lighting and safety precautions and uh, everything to do with the heliport, they actually flown approach and looked at this, the approach from the south. And it's mostly over uh, wetlands. Uh, Craig obviously owned Tiffany for years and knows that whole back area is uh, pretty much just water and wetlands and so forth. But what the requirement is, what they're looking for is a, uh, uh, an easement that protects the approach and it only extends 280 feet from the uh, from the actual heliport, and they own 140 feet from the heliport to the end of the property that they are developing. So it's actually only another 140 feet beyond that, and it's like an 80 foot wide uh, cone area that uh, goes out, and it actually only goes as far as the uh, the uh, cemetery property. So what this will do is, is eliminate the potential for any towers being put in there. And if uh, global warming takes over and it dries up the wetlands and you get start getting some tall trees, they can uh, make sure that they're trimmed. And, and of course, no tall buildings. So that's what this is all about. And it actually 
He said two weeks ago, they finally submitted their official application to the Connecticut Airport Authority and then onto FAA. And uh, so this, although it's not really uh, required, it's a, it's a nice additional protection they have for uh, the future long-term uh, to maintain this heliport. So that's what it's all about. And it's just a matter of uh, the selectmen would have to act on it because it's town property and they're looking for us for that 824 referral. Anybody have any questions about it? No, I have not. No, I'd make a motion that uh, we pass this uh, on to the uh, selectmen for their action to uh, grant this uh, easement. Okay, do we have a second? Peter, okay, any uh, further discussion on the uh, motion? Hearing none, all in favor, raise your hand, please. Okay, we've got the uh, unanimous, thank you. Okay, uh, the, next, the next item is uh, actually an application that's come in and it requires a special uh, uh, permit, so a public hearing. Uh, this is PZC 20-10 uh, for location of 787 Main Street. This is uh, application owner Ahmed Ali 1 LLC, proposal filling station uh, convenience store. Pam, this has already gone for uh, ZBA, has it, and wetlands? Mm -hmm. And wetlands. Okay. All right. So. Uh, I would recommend we set this up for the, because of our meeting late this week for the uh, second uh, meeting in June. Is that uh, work out timing wise for advertising, Pam? You could even do it at the first meeting, June 8th. We yeah. will have time? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, if could we uh, set that up for a public hearing on the uh, 8th of June then? Any objections to that? Okay, then what we'll do is put that on the agenda, Pam, for a special sure. uh, public hearing for 8 June. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item is uh, <clears throat> 8 is approval of minutes for April 13th. Do we have a motion? I'll move approval of minutes. We have a second? Okay, uh, any <clears throat> corrections, deletions, whatever? All in favor? Okay. <clears throat> I'll abstain since I didn't hear half of that meeting. Okay, all right, thank you. Nine communications, Pam, anything? I don't know, I have nothing. Okay, uh, can you tell us under a staff report how uh, this uh, outside dining and that uh, special uh, uh, executive order. How does that work? Do we have a number of people taking advantage of it? We do. We do. Um, not, not every restaurant that we would have expected, but we made contact with all of them, um, you know, and offered to assist them in, you know, the process. Um, there was one or one or two of them that chose not to exercise outdoor dining right now that, you know, their, their business is such that they're okay operating, you know, it's status quo. Um, but, um, we've had several come in, um, uh, and tributary Raleigh pub, uh, the brewery. Um, that's it right now. Uh, ABC may be extending, you know, because part of, uh, the discussions with these businesses is not just to get them, you know, permitted, but to also mm -hmm. let them know of what the governor's order um, allows in terms of, you know, expanding um, the patios. They can even uh, um, use the neighbor's property if the neighbor grants them permission. Um, they can add tents. They can add heat. They, they, they um, you know, they, they can't um, add outdoor entertainment if they didn't have it before. Um, but, you know, just to talk about hours of operation, they, you know, they, their special permit that they may have 
received from you folks back, you know, back, they may have, you know, obligated to um, shorter hours, whereas, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, I think the governor's order was to really broaden um, and, and create flexibilities um, to let these businesses, you know, open back up. You and you obviously uh, recruited economic development. I did. They, yes, they, they uh, Jim Wellen, I want to give a special shout out to Jim Wellen. He, you know, came down, dropped what he was doing and, you know, took the forms, you know, I pre-filled out some of them to help them, you know, with things they might not have access to, you know, but they didn't, as part of this, you know, <laughs> they didn't need to submit a survey, you know, a sketch to the best of their ability, you know, was adequate. I had taken copies of, you know, went through the files and tried to find um, w w where we might have had a survey, it might help them to draw it in, to sketch it in better, just to have the, the paper in front of them. So yeah, EDC was definitely very helpful. I appreciate all your efforts. It was a quick turnaround from the executive order being put in place. And then the following Wednesday was the uh, time when it could start. And yet you had to 10 days to potentially <laughs> review them. So that was uh, good work. Anybody have any questions? We've got uh, Jerry wanted to talk about this uh, a little later on. Uh, under uh, uh, 11E. Uh, so we'll we'll get into this a little bit more than if, if unless somebody has a question of Pam with regards to this now. Okay. Um, George, I'll just mention that I see Joanne Pelletier has joined the meeting, and she's a representative from the sign company for Hartford Hospital. I don't, I don't know if you want to take that discussion up ahead of zone changes and the other two, um, the executive order, the the items that. I have no problem moving that up. No. Anybody uh, object to that? No. Okay, this is to do with the uh, the Hartford Hospital project, uh, and it's a uh, it's a pedestal sign that's being proposed. Yeah, I'll share the screen so that everyone's looking at the same. Um, let me just rotate it. Joanne, I don't know if you wanted to um, begin yeah. your. Sure. Thank you so much for moving me up. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Joan Pelletier. I'm with Patterson Sign Group. We're the sign uh, company that does all of the work for Hartford Healthcare. And as you know, they're uh, opening quite a nice center in your town, which is exciting. Um, the reason that we wanted to present today is because um, we are looking at the walls, the code for the wall sign and I have to say that I'm interpreting or ter interpreting it a little differently than uh, what was then explained to me. And I wanted to just clarify if there was a possibility that perhaps um, we could consider two of the signs on the building to be directional in nature rather than because there's no branding. So to make a long story short, so the, the front of the elevation that faces Route 44 currently has 130, or 130 linear feet of frontage which uh, per code that would translate to 260 square foot of signage allowed. We Joanne, Joanne yeah. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I, I believe that um, th that issue has been resolved with the oh, CEO okay. and okay. that interpretation. So really all you need to do is present the sign package to the commission and oh, just okay. let them see, you know, sizing, you know, but, but as far okay. as, you know, that whole thing. Oh, okay. Then, no um, all right. No problem. So currently what we're proposing to do for the sign package is we're proposing branding on the front elevation as well as identification to show the emergency signage um, that is going to ad advertise that there is emergency services as well as the Lifestar service will be offered at this facility. So these two signs um, do tally to be within code on the front elevation that faces Route 44. Is there any question, the signs currently are uh, presented to be halo lit, so they will not be face lit. They will have a light glow that's coming out from the back of the letters, so that it is a nicer sign, uh, and that will be for both signs on that elevation. On the rear elevation, which is really their main entrance, that's where they're trying to get all of the traffic over to the back entrance. Um, 
on the back entrance, uh, the same again, it's going to have the Hartford Healthcare signage and the main entrance will be put on top of the canopy is what we're proposing. Again, the signs are illuminated via halo lighting and um, therefore they're not face lit. So they're not so much in your face as far as lighting goes. And those are the two signs we're proposing. Again, those fall within the square footage allowance for that elevation. Uh, that's the main entrance specification. And if you keep scrolling for me, Pam, we'll be able to get to the, okay. So on the, if you can stop right there, okay. On the building elevation there, you will see on the left that there is a mini canopy there. And that is for the ambulance entrance only. The reason that wall sign is there, and again, it does fit within the square footage allowance, is to stop the public from using that entrance because that will be strictly used by the Lifestar staff and by the ambulances that are coming to pick up and or remove patients from the facility. So that's a small sign. It's a two foot by uh, 22 inches. And it's five square feet. So if you can scroll down a little further, Pam. Uh, and that's the, originally we had two monuments. We were told we were only allowed one. So this is the monument. And again, this monument Did I lose you because the call, phone call came in? I apologize. Okay, I, I still have you all, right? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, so this this monument is double sided. It is internally illuminated. The entire sign is um, is aluminum. The letters only are cut out, and only the copy will be lighting. Um, the sign is ten foot in height, and it does meet the square footage allowance, and that will be the only. Uh, entrance monument on the property. Now that sign, you have the ability to add other service listings on it as well under Winston Imaging? That is correct. Uh, typically, Hartford Healthcare is not a big fan of listing uh, too many services on their signs. They usually like to see just their branding at the top of it. The emergency is always featured. Winstead Imaging is currently shown although we're unsure if that will be on the sign, but for permitting purposes, I wanted to show the worst case scenario for now of what the sign could look like. Winstead imaging may actually be removed from the sign. It's really the size of it uh, is what Correct. we're concerned about and the way it's lit. And yeah. uh, do you have, Pam, can you show us on the uh, site plan, bring that back to exactly where that, uh, Monument sign is proposed. Right here. Okay, that okay, right at that entrance. Okay, that is correct. Um, a question: Do you need any permits from the state DOT for sight line requirement, or is it on your property or on state property where that sign is going to be? The sign is on our property. If currently it's not currently correctly depicted, we're going to be doing a survey at the site. Uh, but the site is under construction, but the sign is planned to be on our property. Okay, but uh, as far as from the Connecticut DOT, do you need a permit for sight line requirements for your driveway? Will that uh, upset or when you we will be We will be meeting the 10 foot setback uh, requirement. So okay. therefore we will not be requiring a permit from DOT because we are meeting the setback requirements. Okay. We'll have the sight line for DOT. Correct. Good, good point, Peter. Does that, uh, because that uh, curb cut, the curb cuts that are on the project uh, did not include this pedestal uh, sign, as I recall. That is correct. The pedestal sign was added afterwards. Mm -hmm. When they were uh, proposing the development of the property, mm -hmm. uh, they failed to include the sign company to be able to show that where the signage was going to be proposed. Mm -hmm. But currently, we're going to work with what the property is going to be like and make sure that the sign fits within the setback requirements and within the property lines. Okay. Pers personally, I don't see this as a uh, require, you know, to go back through a special permit process. I think this is uh, a small addition to the you know, overall project. Uh, so I would be inclined to, to just uh, work it through uh, this meeting if, uh, but I'd like to everybody else to chime in. 
Yes, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> I agree. Agree. Okay, so we're we're in agreement. Uh, and you've got a copy of these plans. <clears throat> yeah, they, they're coming in with a zoning permit. Okay. So you, okay. you just, you know, it's minor enough. That's what you're making a finding tonight. That's that correct. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I that's that I feel there's a consensus from that that it's a minor modification to the plan doesn't require a, a special permit follow up. Do you want a motion to that effect, George? Why don't we do? Yes, please. Uh, motion to approve the uh, minor sign modification for signs for heart health care. I'll second that. Okay. Any uh, further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. I appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you very much. Welcome. You, you have know, a Craig, great day. You had yeah, a great we, started off, we started off uh, saying you were, wanted to talk about the solar farm on under six, and I, I skipped by it. I apologize. So if we could, let's go back to that. It's no problem. I was quite challenged in joining the meeting on Zoom. So I'll be honest with you, I was late to the meeting. So. No problem. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, and you have a fabulous evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. So... Uh, Let's just back up to six. Craig had mentioned he wanted to talk about the solar farm proposal. And, uh, yeah, I, I've been following with great interest. Uh, there's a similar uh, project has been proposed over in Candle, uh, adjacent to Candlewood Lake. I don't recall the, I don't know whether it's Bethany or which one of those towns, but uh, they've been uh, impeded by the water stormwater uh, management uh, and has been the project as as George said twice it's been rejected. I thought I thought from what I read that it had been rejected as presented and if they're going to do it they're going to come back. My concern is I'm very familiar with the property up here on Platte Hill as you are all well aware I spent uh, the better part of three years uh, fighting that development or limiting its size anyway. And there are a lot of issues uh, with uh, the topography of that property. And my concern is that you're gonna put 40 acres of solid panels there. So there's very little chance you're gonna have any undergrowth of any consequence. And having lived on this hill for the past 50 some odd years of my life, I mean, we get some pretty violent storms up here. And that property is not flat. It goes up, down, sideways. The backside of it goes down into Suckerbrook. Uh, excuse me, not Suckerbrook, but uh, Taylorbrook, I, I'm sorry. And the other side goes down towards uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Rollins' property. And we're wins its way down towards the lake. My concern is that I, I haven't heard anything uh, that makes me feel confident that um, these issues have been properly, I'm not saying they haven't, I just haven't heard, and I'm open to discussion, that they haven't been properly or adequately uh, scrutinized to make sure that does not, does not become an issue uh, in the near term and that that is I know it's a, a, a government project and we have no say in it we have no jurisdiction but I believe we took intervener status did we not may, may I just for a moment if you want to bear with me and look at your screen and can I show you um, I have a link on the town of Winchester website to the siting council application as it unfolds. So you can read all of the documents that are submitted. Okay. And then, so under the town of Winchester, you'll see we're in boards and committees. And when you go to the inland wetlands and water courses and scroll to look for the tab on the left, you'll see here, and I've linked that to all of the documents that are before the siting council. Okay. So you, you you know you can you can read the interrogatories. That was the uh, the council response. Uh, 
you know, you'll see that, you know, the siting council put out their own um, questions to the applicant. Um, our attorney is now forming um, a letter that she's going to submit on the town's behalf. And um, I think, George, you said, you, I spoke to her yesterday, you spoke to her yesterday. I did. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you can follow the application through that link. Okay. That I, good. That's good. I, I just think there's concerns there. And I think this can this Candlewood situation, it's the only reason that it became, came to my, you know, it made sense to me is that. Granted, the Candlewood is a much larger, this is only 1.9 or 1.6, whatever. The one in Candlewood is is two or three times that size. But um, it, it is enough of a concern that it has been sidelined, if not permanently, at least temporarily. And I just was hoping that the same scrutiny could be provided uh, for that. That's all. Well, I, yesterday uh, afternoon, Craig, I, I got a call from uh, Bob Geiger, uh, had the attorney that's worked looking for our, on our behalf to intervene, uh, attorney uh, Dubuque. Uh, and I talked to her about those concerns that you just discussed. It's a, it's a, it's a major watershed uh, contributor to the Highland Lake and the, the streams uh, is feeding into it. And uh, also uh, Art had brought up this, this situation that I know I was concerned when we had that Mickey Mouse uh, windmill thing with the tin cans and all that stuff that went up on the Clug Hill farm. And Correct. Was a yeah. failure. Um, so she said that with regards to that issue, uh, they've looked at that as far as the materials they're going to be using for the the, the uh, panels, and they said they're recyclable at the end of their lives. So hopefully that's just not a statement that somebody's verified it. Uh, but she's. She took, took that note and uh, I suggested that whatever the uh, structures that hold these things or whatever happens and then when these things are finished, that there should be some uh, opportunity to have some kind of a bond in place to protect the, uh, the, you know, the town from having to absorb removing them and so forth. And she indicated that some of these uh, solar farms are being proposed by some pretty major companies, and this was a this is a standalone operation. So she feels that they probably will look favorably at at a bonding requirement with with that regard. But I also emphasize that this watershed is such a critical issue, and any contribution to uh, uh, deteriorate the condition of Highland Lake, which is such an important part of our uh, uh, community for uh, tax uh, level and so forth, that it should be scrutinized heavily. So she said that, that in fact, uh, once they go through this process, she had to submit things, I think by Tuesday, this coming Tuesday is her deadline. And uh, when this goes through, uh, it's subject to the DEEP uh, and that's what the problem is over at Candlewood. They never, uh, they, they never were able to approve a stormwater management program for that. Correct. Up there. Correct. So Correct. this would be additionally uh, scrutinized uh, very extensively. And she said the more recent uh, DEEP uh, regulations pertaining to these types of things, uh, it, they're encouraging because they're stronger. So uh, from my conversation with her, it sounds like they're look, gonna look at this carefully. Okay. I, I just I just wanted to make sure that it just wasn't gonna go, be swept under the carpet and then, you know. Think about it later, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I can't see it from my, my you know, not that that's any, any means, but I just think the lake, a couple of the people at the lake have called me and, and have, you know, rekindled the interest or whatever you wanna call it, so. Uh, uh, I suggested that they try and get in touch with the town and see if they can join in the intervener. I, I, I don't know how effective. Uh, well, this, this attorney did say that uh, she's had some comments uh, directed to her from uh, the neighborhood. And of course, some of it is not my backyard type of thing. Right. But these concerns that you raised are certainly legitimate for the entire community. Uh, and, and she's aware of it. 
Yeah, she's she's reached out to Dave Sirana, which the fire chief and myself uh, mm -hmm. with through emails and uh, with a lot of questions and uh, we've responded to her concerns we have and uh, how the concerns can be addressed. So also on certain things for that. She's also uh, been in contact with uh, Jen Perga with the land trust uh, with regards to how that would fit because that's a, that's a it sounds like an important uh, part of this uh, so that there would be a lot of protected property. Yes, correct. Okay. Anybody else have any questions with regards to this? Is there any more opportunity with the state to submit uh, letters or anything like that? Well, it sounds like the deadline, uh, if, if you want, I'll, I'll uh, forward to your email uh, her contact information will uh, I think Tuesday is the deadline. So if you, in all the people you meet and do work with, if you have to contribute something, I'll uh, you know be very happy. I'll send it to everybody on the commission. And if anybody else wants to uh, contact her, uh, this is the time that has to be done. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, if we don't have anything else, I'm sorry about skipping around on that, but... <clears throat> Okay, down to uh, 11 with uh, the POCD discussion. Uh, we've, we've got, uh, we had five of us that are gonna uh, participate with doing some preliminary review. So I'm still waiting for Jerry and for Craig, if you have time to address that so we can get this thing moved along a little bit. Uh, Short-term rentals, we'll wait until we can get a, a regular sit-down meeting in case we've got people interested. Uh, 11C, zone changes. This is interesting. Uh, we, we talked about at one of our meetings we were last at, uh, the gateway zone. And uh, we talked about it with an application up on the, uh, up above by the uh, regional seven school and so forth. But, and then on the west end of town, we talked about it. But what we discovered was Route 8 North, for some reason, I don't know whether it was Steve Sadlowski or whether it was whoever did the map for us, they've run the uh, gateway all the way up to Walnut Street, which was never anybody's intention. So what I've asked Pam to do is, and that she did assemble uh, the... Uh, properties that are associated with it. Uh, and with the commission's approval, I'd like to see us start this process of having a public hearing to review the uh, this gateway uh, zone boundary definition and put it on a uh, upcoming, uh, uh, you know, public hearing. You look at the map, do we have a map, uh, Pam, or? I'm getting it ready. We are, okay. I was shocked to see this thing run all the way up to Walnut Street. Yes, definitely. So are you saying the GIS? So there you can see in the blue is uh, that's, 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 uh, so here's some, some of the Walnut properties. Okay, all right. So here's North Main. All the yellow is uh, gateway. So these are properties. So, so when I, I went down, I met with Pam and we went through it. And I think uh, Craig, when, when you and Dave Villa and I, we talked about this. We talked about one parcel deep on uh, in this area. <clears throat> so I agree. I, 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 don't re I don't remember poignantly, but I do. I, I remember we were pretty careful about what we were choosing. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I've uh, asked Pam to try to put something together on, and that's what she's done with that handout that, that was uh, in our packets. Uh, to try to bring this back down to be in harmony with what I think our original uh, discussions were, at least in my recollection, it certainly was. 
and eliminate uh, you know all that residential that's right on uh, Walnut. So if that's, uh, and then we've got the west end of town, we've got that that we've already talked about and we've talked about it on <clears throat> the area on 44 coming into town uh, by just, you know, leading up to Henny Penny. Uh, and it'd be, it'd be one property uh, <clears throat> deep. Some of it, in fact, would still touch the, uh, the road, but the, the uh, topography there, it's uh, quite a substantial increase in elevation. So I don't think it's, it would be much of a factor. But yeah. Not yes. looking, it looks like that all the properties are, are one parcel deep on there. Maybe that's yes. what went in. Yeah. They're all very steep, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is Henny Penny right here. Yeah. <clears throat> and these are these are Town Gateway, and these are all residential homes along. So in the topography on those properties that you just pointed out, too, it's certainly, uh, it's, it's really not conducive to development along 44, and, and it's a state highway, so probably getting curb cut access to something like that and then with the topography just a question of the commission do you think we should put those properties uh, back into the uh, uh we had talked about the zone we were talking about it being into the uh which is across the street right pm that backed up to it uh wow. yeah I'm putting it in rural residential yeah yeah the gray is rural residential yeah um, Would you want rural residential or town single family? What do we have as town single family? The blue is town single family, isn't it? Across yes. the street, yeah. Yep. Town single family, actually, the lot <laughs> sizes would fit better in, to go with town single family, what Peter's just asking. Yep. Yeah, only because you don't have any large lots there with a true road. good point. Good point. Yep. Okay. What, what's anybody else have comments about it? Well, some of those houses don't really come down Route 44. No, they don't. And uh, so there's really no reason, and they're all old houses. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if any of them are multifamily now. I think they're all pretty much single family. I think you're right. You know, right. And with town gateway, um, you know, you, you could have, I, I could pull up the regs so you can see the difference. You know, it, it's very telling to take the regs, you know, with you as you're looking at these and to think that, you know, there, these, this is, this is this one, um, yeah, Oakdale and Glendale, like these, these are homes that would be at that, you know, this is a residential area. And you know, like like you say, the curb cut is already onto Old New Hartford Road, so yeah. you may not want some of the uses that are by right in Town Gateway. No, but Pam, just uh, pull pull up toward the intersection. We've got more. Is that more Town Gateway up there? Yes. So, and that's where. Um... That's all residential there too. Right. Yes, it is. That, that should go into the town single family so it'd be in harmony. I don't know. Uh, well. I've got Glendale both for streets yeah. there. Wow, I didn't even see that when we were down there I looking. All cool. added to it is. Yeah, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine, ten parcels that you'd probably want put in go town single family. Blue, town single family. I, I would say that it's more in harmony with the nature of there. Okay. And I, I think the one you have uh, right at the intersection that goes of uh, Butts Route 8 is owned by the state DOT. That one. Yeah. Oh, right close. Yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. So I think that would be more in harmony with Blue with the town single family. And then 
Yes. Okay, and then I'll bring us down to um, Strong Terrace, that which is Strong Terrace Whiting Street, mm -hmm. where right. these are Town Gateway, and you may not, I think we had one, two, three, four. Yeah, I, I sent you, because uh, I went down there and I drove this neighborhood and looked yep. at this. So we had those uh, early parcels, uh, At, at, from the intersection down toward the, uh, the you know, the, uh, the commercial development on Whiting. Uh, so those, I think, should be put back into this town single family. That, that's where their houses are built and that's where they're accessed. Yes, I agree. But I had given you the street numbers, Pam. I, yeah, I no, they're, they're on the Excel sheet, yep. Okay, all right. Oh, okay. Oh, you have it already. Good. Good. Yeah. And then I kind of went away from it because I was getting my bearings. So hold on one second. Let me get us back here. Oh, it's, uh, it's this whole block. Yes. That we two blocks this one and then the one this this one toward hollenberg yes yes yeah. that, okay did you cover that, <clears throat> that so so th these would go uh to um town center residential and these would go to town single town family, single family yeah. yep. that'd be in harmony keeping the neighborhood the way it is and uh and you could arguably make these into town single family without it being spot zoning. It's really up to the commission to look at the uses in the two zones, town single family, town center residential, and then really look at the properties and, and see what you think. Because really, I think either would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. Anybody have any thoughts on it? This is above Hollibird Avenue on the intersection with Walnut in between Wetmore. Should that go to town single family or or the uh, uh, maybe maybe it'd be worth having Pam look at the assessors list, see if they're all single family now or not, so we don't create a hardship. Yeah. Yeah. This, okay. I on um, uh on just that block, right? Correct. Yes. I believe so. Just between Halbert and Wetmore. Yep. I think most of them are single family, but you may just want to check. Just, check, yeah, just to be sure. Right. All right. Okay. Yep. That was the last area, wasn't it, Pam? Yeah, I mean, because we had already talked about the one uh, up towards uh, Colbert Road. Yes. And actually, we, we had looked at the uh, gateway heading south on Route 800, and I think that's pretty much one parcel deep. Um, do, do you want to look down there? One eight hundred, uh, eight hundred rather. Yeah, you might. While well, we're on it, if we could, please. Let me take this back off. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> Right. We're going down Raleigh Street. Right. Let me uh this is that uh that's that large piece of land. Mm -hmm. I'll make it even.
There we go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's Mountain Road. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that looks that looks like uh, what we intended. Yeah, it's only one one width wide or yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that covers it. So if, if everybody's in agreement, we'll uh, get that scheduled for when it's appropriate. Because, well, under this uh, executive uh, order business about this stuff, what's our process, Pam? Well, how do you see it? Do we have to still notify the COG in adjoining town? Yeah, you got to notify them. But um, I think the COG is being very uh, responsive. Like they're not taking the 35 days. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should set it up for the 22nd of uh, June. Is that yeah. the, is that the uh, and then talk about it again at the you know review like he wants to know those properties and whether they're single family residences right, right now. Yes, so yes. I'll, I'll get all that to you and then just go over it again on June 8th. Yes, please. Is, is there anything else that the commission wants to see? Anybody else have any other issues that they've noticed? That was a pretty just big. Just make sure you have single family on. on the... Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Otherwise, we're going to end up with twenty-one zones again. <laughs> or we'll come up with all these uh, <laughs> zoning, uh, you know, questions that we'll have to be. But anyway, anomaly. Right. They're, they're called anomalies, George. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Jesus, it's, a, it's a difficult project trying to make everybody happy. Right? So if that's uh, okay, we'll do that. Um, okay, under... Uh... Sorry. Now, the, the executive order outside dining, I just wanted to bring everybody up to date on that. And then, Jerry, you had some issues that you wanted to talk about with regards to the legality of this whole executive order thing. Um, but this executive order, this outside dining, one thing that uh, got me was, you know, the or executive order said it, it, it ends in September. Well, I didn't read where, where that meant. So I assumed it must have been the end of August. And uh, so I started, I talked to Pam about it. I thought, thought about it. We've got people that are investing money in tables and canopies and whatever else they're involved with signage. And I said, why, why wouldn't the governor have put the executive order to at least go through the full season? So probably by the end of October, end it. Well, so I called uh, the, uh, the uh, Lieutenant Governor, Sue Bicevich, who I've known for a number of years. And I asked her the question and uh, she said, well, the, the executive order uh, ends on the 7th of September. She says, but I, I really, you know, I'm not the one I should be talking to. She gave me then a reference to contact their uh, council. So I emailed the council with my concerns and I got an answer back from, this is a guy named uh, Doug uh, Delina. And uh, he, he, uh, he's deputy general counsel. So first of all, I clarified what this executive order business, which I didn't know how it worked, but it's an act of the, the legislature that permits him to do this. And it gives him a six month time period is the maximum he can do it for. So it does in fact end in September, but it's midnight on the September 9th. And he agreed that uh, unless the legislature grants the uh, governor the room to do any ex extension of this uh, to address what I was talking about, uh, he didn't know if that would be possible, but he did say in writing, municipalities individually could extend the zoning approvals past September uh, ninth on this, you know, basis of this uh, COVID-19. Uh, and if it didn't get extended, anybody that had this would have to go to Torrington Area Health to get approval for the expanded uh, dining area. They'd have to, if they've got a liquor license, they'd have to go to the Liquor Control Commission 
and go through that whole process. And, and really, they would have to come to us to get outside dining approval for their site. So my thought is to bring it to Yuka folks is can, can we go ahead and authorize an extension of, there aren't that many that have been granted, but at least let them go through the 31st of October without having to go through the whole thing. Because first of all, I don't think they'll ever get it approved in that time. Second, if they've invested the money and they're trying to recruit some of their uh, lost revenue that we've been shut down for you know eight weeks or whatever it's been, uh, this would give them an opportunity to just you know fill out the season. So pass it around the room and see you know what what are your thoughts? I I'm in full agreement from the standpoint that they should be extended because they're they've been put under undue duress for whatever reason mm -hmm. and I, I i can't see i mean all of them are, are working under very extreme conditions and if this is a means by which they can expand some of their dollars i think we should make it as easy i was led to believe that this program was going to make it carte blanche and uh, after all the paper if you recall in richfield when this started and they were yeah, bitching right. about the 250 bucks so i i definitely would would be in favor of such an extension. Okay. George, uh, Peter. Yeah, I, I think we should all maybe look at to the end of October. Because yes. uh, with the things you said, and Pam said that where they could put up a tent, they can also have heat. Yes. Uh, it just gives them a longer season. Yes. So, you, so you're in favor. I'm all for that as well. Okay, John, and then here you were in the room. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, what's your thought? Well, I got a couple of things, and I agree with you, George. This was actually, uh, you know, one of the issues I wanted to talk about from a legal good. standpoint. Good. And uh, and one of my concerns right from the beginning of this is that typically when new land use regulations come from Hartford. You know, we at least have an opportunity to have a hearing and have discussion to see how how this actually applies to Winchester land use. So I'm glad we're actually having a, a discussion on this right now. But I, I did some research about the executive order process, and the governor is granted a civil, uh, executive order for civil preparedness. You know, in case there's a storm or some kind of uh, uh, natural event, um, also for public health and and public health includes like of a pandemic or what have you, as the governor has claimed right now. My issue with this has been that if you take a look at the, the rate of exposure to this, to this virus and the subsequent deaths, it's, it's no different than the same flu season back in 2017, 2018, and uh, even last year. So my concern is by extending this, and I don't have a problem extending it, but what happens with the next virus? You know, this could keep on going on forever and ever. And if we're dealing with just strictly a, a, a flu type situation, which of course people die who, who acquire the flu even in other, other years, we have basically destroyed the ability of these restaurants to, to function. Unless they're operating at 100%, they're not gonna survive. I mean, that's the sad reality. So the question here is, is this in fact a valid, um, a valid executive order from a public health standpoint? You mentioned, the reason why I question this is you mentioned that um, these, these particular restaurants have to go before the liquor boards. Um, liquor licensing has traditionally been to prevent minors from getting into bars and restaurants and, and ordering alcohol. So that really has nothing to do with you know, so-called public health in terms of a pandemic. So my concern, George, is that if we keep doing this, what do these people do in the wintertime? I mean, October gets rather cold here anyhow. I mean, if you're gonna have an enclosed space with a heater, why not just go indoors? Well, you know, I frankly, I think that 
we're going to see the restaurants open on the inside, but this gives them the ability to continue under this emergency kind of uh, to supplement their interior and hopefully gain a little more income and, you know, try to recoup something that's been lost here by, I mean, it, you know, it's one thing if the, our country shut down, but the whole world shut down for this, which I, that's a whole, I, I don't, by the whole uh, thing, it appears you don't either, but uh, it's beyond what we can do with our commission and so forth. But, uh, you know, I agree that, but I all I'm thinking about is with this executive order and what we've given for a temporary permit, uh, they don't have to go to liquor control. They don't have to go to the, the Torrington area health uh, in our area. Uh, the only way Torrington Area Health would be called is if there's somebody puts a complaint in. But if we don't give them a grant, the extension, to, at least for the rest of the season here, then they would have to go to Torrington Area Health and they would have to go to liquor control with all that stuff is waived to expedite some kind of an opportunity for the restaurants that are capable of doing this to uh, try to start making their livelihood back again. Yeah, and I don't have a problem with that, George. I just wanted to point out um, some factors here that I think have been detrimental and uh, causing a restraint of business. I, I totally agree with you. And the other thing, just one last thing, George. The question I also have from a legal standpoint, zoning commission is, is deal, deals with uh, setbacks. We're dealing with buildings. We're dealing with you know, actual zone related um, uses. And so my concern was, is this really, does this really fit the zoning commission? Should this really be with a public health commission? You know, as far as these, uh, I know we're trying to say you can use your, your, um, your parking spaces and whatnot, but you know, is this really, does this really come under the jurisdiction of a uh, zoning commission? Well, it's utilization of the site and their, their property and, and that, that it does, but I mean, there are issues that they have to fulfill with regards to cleanliness and so on and so forth, which is definitely, you know, public health issues with that the, uh, our uh, health district would be. And that's why they had indicated that the only way they get involved with this temporary uh, permitting would be if they have a complaint. So it's still available. To, you know, for people to protect, uh, you know, there's something they see that's not right. <clears throat> All right, that's good, okay. thank you. But that, yeah, valid, valid points. But those are some issues that we could talk about outside of the commission as well, because I've got a lot of feelings with regards to this as well. Uh, uh, Will, I don't, did you? Well, I think by extending it, yeah, we're getting a, being proactive and giving the restaurants a chance to plan for a fall season outside. Mm -hmm. And if it also gives their patrons some sense of well being by not being in a crowded restaurant if they're still worried about the virus. So, by letting the restaurants prepare for a fall season, which it's going to stop at the end of October anyway. So nobody's going to be sitting sure. out there in December. Sure. You, we're just getting, we're being proactive and allowing them that to happen, allowing them to prepare for it. So I kind of think it's a good idea. Thank you. John, uh, <clears throat> what are your thoughts? Sorry, I was muted there. Yeah, again, I, I echo what everybody else is saying. I'm, I'm just as anxious as everybody else to get things back to um, the economy. And anything that's gonna happen to help that, I am all 100% for it. Okay. Well, let me uh, make a motion that we, uh, as a commission, authorize the uh, these temporary uh, permits that are being issued uh, under this executive order. Uh, be extended uh, through uh, 31 October. I'll second it. Okay, second. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Please. Okay, unanimous. I think, first of all, I think that this is an important thing that we're doing. We're trying to, uh, too many times government gets involved with slowing things down and uh, I think our commission is one that's looking forward to uh, 
being proactive on a lot of issues and uh, move things forward as fast. So if we didn't shut down like Litchfield, what'd they say? They weren't going to meet until June for their yep. land use meetings. Yeah, right. Uh, I don't think that's acceptable. We've got a short building season anyways. Uh, okay. Uh, any other uh, issues that we haven't put on the agenda, but you'd like to raise while we're together? Uh, just a couple I had for Pam. Anything with uh, the Canavo property at all? Canavo? Canavo, Main Street? Yes, it was mailed out. Okay. That, yep. And what's that, an enforcement letter or what? Yeah, it, it hasn't been signed for yet. Okay, not surprised. Um, <laughs> and what about Camp Wani? Anything with that? Uh, wetlands denied it the other night because oh. they, they they didn't show up for the um, second consecutive meeting. They didn't get provided the information they requested or anything? Okay. So for that kids. Was, yep, okay. Pam, just along those lines, if we never took any formal action on that WANI application. They denied it. We did? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't remember with that. I must be joining Craig's uh, fan club there with the age or something. <laughs> I didn't remember that we turned it down. Keep it up, George. You get any, I'll get you. I know, out. we got good distance though, Craig. You can't, you can't swing. <laughs> The yeah. Okay. Anybody else? George, I have another quick item to go back to the executive order, and I'll make this quick. Like you, I was reading over and trying to look at uh, the potential uh, legal fallout with this. And uh, one of my concerns was, and this particularly applies to Pam, where she's making decisions on these applications, quote unquote applications. Um, there's, a, there's a safety and health component to that which makes the, since I'm not a doctor and not anybody else here has any, I don't have any medical experience or safety. Um, are we protected, George, from uh, legal action as far as if anything were to happen as a result of a safety issue with, you know, we, let's say we, uh, you know, we're dealing with something, say at Raleigh, down the Raleigh complex. Um, there's a, there, we're not dealing with the traffic flow there, um, people carrying uh, food items back and forth between the restaurants there there's a potential for, um, you know, mishaps to happen. And I'm just wondering, um, especially for Pam's sake, is, is there protections as part of this executive order, which indemnifies us as to decisions that are made. And then if it goes to appeal to us, you know, how is that handled? Okay, well, first of all, just do the simple part. If the only <clears throat> appeal we get is if there's a denial or the application, uh, the applicant didn't get exactly what they applied for, then we're the board to hear the appeal. Um, but the uh, from the liability, I thought I, and uh, Peter forwarded the uh, ex executive order to me, and I, I, I thought that it was covered, that it extended our whatever our liability coverage. I don't know how the state could do that. So it would have to be something that might have to be reviewed with uh, Kevin uh, to ensure that uh, you know we haven't overstepped our uh, bounds. But I mean, the, the critical part is when they're trying to cordon off a parking area so that the traffic flow is going to be not uh, impacting uh, people dining and wait staff coming out. So that that's if we have any of that going on. I mean, some of these things we could have uh, people being approved to part of the street, the, the parking areas uh, along a street and the state highway, the state DOT would have to get involved with that, but. And they have already. Yes. Uh, Mystic Pizza got approval to use the DOT right away. Yeah, yeah. And have so, you seen anything with that yet? <laughs> I'm sorry. Have you seen anything with that, you know, with those, that type of uh, issue coming across your desk? Mark is approving them just to correct, you know, um, and Mark, if he's going to err, it's on the side of safety. Um, so he, there is um, a couple applications that he's waiting for more information on. Um, you know, all of the guidance that's come from the state has been, you know, to, and and even um, there was a memo from the state building official and the state fire marshal to the local building officials and local fire marshals 
that they need to be creative as these, you know, I think was, was the term that, you know, you know, the expectation and, and, but your point is well taken about liability. That's fine and well to be creative. So long as, you know, the town isn't exposed. Right. You know, the, you know if there if there's a there if there's a claim or damages are suffered, which you know undoubtedly they will, because everything is moving at you know such such a fast speed, which is a good thing for the businesses. You know, I, you hope that everyone you know remains safe. Um, it's a good point about what type of liability is there, because you know there's all this you know you know there's all this guidance you know. To, you know, to, to Mark as the ZEO, he's signing them as a, as a zoning enforcement officer, um, but it's really hard to take that building official hat off. You know, right. and, you know it's, it's definitely, um, it's, it's definitely not without its challenges. But I mean, that could be taken place with any of the outside dining that we've uh, uh, you know, approved in our regular process of approvals too. It's just, this is a little unusual when somebody can take up space in the parking area where you usually have vehicle traffic. So uh, if uh, you might raise that issue just with our insurance carrier or, or with Kevin, uh, just sure. to make sure we're, we're covered so we don't go off on sure. a limb someplace. Better to sure. be protected. Okay, good point, Jerry. Okay, any other comments or questions? Motion to adjourn. Okay, all in favor. Good meeting. Thanks everybody for participation. Let's get out and enjoy ourselves where we can now. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, George. Bye. Good.